We'd also like to let you know that we've got plenty of refreshments today. So during the breaks and whenever it's appropriate, uh, please partake of the refreshments. If you go home hungry, it's your fault. <laughs> okay, in an effort to keep us on schedule, a lot of people have said that DTM stands for Don't Time Me. Right. So right. I'm going to turn the lectern over to our Toastmaster for the day. Let me give him a brief introduction. Our Toastmaster today rose from humble beginnings downstate to become a success successful attorney, pastor, and he's also known worldwide as an effective communicator. In fact, he is the 2006 world champion of public speaking. And it's my pleasure to introduce your Toastmaster for the day, Mr. Ed Hurd. Well, good morning to each and every one of you. Morning. It is an honor and a blessing to be here. I am a pastor, and I almost said, let's take up the offering first. <laughs> I'm very, very grateful for being here. We want to do a number of things first. We just want to share a brief inspirational moment for each of you. I grew up in the 70s, and we used to watch a show called The Wide World of Sports. Anybody remember that? Yeah. It came on Saturdays, and Saturday was the day I wanted to watch cartoons, but that was my mother's cleaning day. And the only time we could watch TV was after we finished cleaning. And by the time we finished, it was afternoon, and the wide world of sports was on. But they had an introduction to that show. And they talked about two things, the thrill of human competition. And then they talked about the agony of defeat. <laughs> and they had this guy falling down a ski slope. And every week I'd say, that must be the most humiliated guy in all of America, wherever he's from. Because they show him in that portion that said, the agony of the field. Well, today you're here for this competition. And it has the thrill of competition, but there will be no agony of the field. Right. Everybody who participates in these contests is a winner in their own right. And we just want to commend them for having the boldness to come forward and present their skills today. Let's begin by giving them a big round of applause. Contest, we want to take some housekeeping matters and take care of that first. If you have a cell phone, a pager, or any device that would ring or give an alert or an alarm, we're going to ask that if you would please turn that off. We don't want to distract any of our contestants. So we'll give you a moment to turn your cell phones, your pagers, any type of alarming device, put that in the off or silent mode so that we will not distract any of our contestants. Secondarily, we want to take note of an entire list of dignitaries that we have here. Hopefully I will not omit anyone. If I do, you can bring it to my attention at the end. We have uh, our Northwest Division Governor, Linda, give me that last name. I knew that, Linda Eddingberg. <laughs> our Southwest Division Governor, Donna Weston. Division Governor and my club president, Mr. Mike Casey. <laughs> Going right along, we then have the North 41 Area Governor, Ethel Gochi. <laughs> the South 52 Area Governor, Joyce Scott. Charles Chapman. Yeah. Charles 54 Area Governor John McIntyre. Uh, South 55 Area Governor Donnelly Williams. Seven, good area governor, Vanessa Glover. <laughs> of our past district governors, we have the 2008-2009 past district governor, Patricia Martin. <laughs> the 
2007-2008 past district governor and uh, contest chair tonight, Carolyn Arthur. Governorship. We have the public relations officer, Sue Rosenfeld. This is <laughs> and our immediate past district governor, Mr. Kyle Roti. Somebody <laughs> help me with the name he just told me about. I'm getting old and I forget names real quickly. That name is any governor of marketing, Michelle Gable. Michelle Gable. Thank you. <laughs> South uh, 51 area. All right. <laughs> <laughs> arms for this morning's contest. <laughs> Anyone else? I will admit it. You know, Help me. One area of government for John Lab. John. Okay. So <laughs> evaluation contest. The first contest we'll have will be the speech evaluation contest. When that contest has concluded, we will have a 10-minute break. After the break, we'll conduct then the humorous speech contest. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International Rules, which govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestant's presentation. You may do so, if time permits, during the moment of silence between each presentation. With that said, I believe that is all the housekeeping matters we need to take care of. We are prepared. Let's get this contest going. Let the contest begin. <laughs> We're going to begin with the speech evaluation contest, and if you have a program, I'm going to give you the speaking order for them in the manner in which they will come. For the speech evaluation contest, they will come in the following order. Speaker number one is Margaret Winters. Please note, there's an S at the end of her name, it's not in the program. Margaret Winters is speaker number one. Speaker number two will be Dave Roberson. Dave Roberson, speaker number two. Speaker number three will be Michael Gugis. Michael Gugis will be speaker number three. Speaker number four, <coughs> Vanessa Hubbard. Vanessa, thank you. Vanessa Hubbard will be speaker number four. Speaker number five, Sabrina Coleman Easter. Sabrina Coleman Easter will be speaker number five. Speaker number six will be Renita Dixon. Renita Dixon, speaker number six. And rounding out our competition will be speaker number seven, Ron Lorsch. Ron Lorsch will be speaker number seven. That will be our speaking order as we begin. We're going to allow all of our speakers, if our sergeant at arms is prepared, to be removed from the room and you'll call, we'll call them in and we'll be able to I see an hand in the back. Could we have all of our speakers please then to stand? They're here, they're not here. Oh, good. They're already out. Okay. We then must have, every time we have this competition, a target speaker. That speaker is given the opportunity to present a speech that they will be evaluating, which is the basis for the contest itself. In order for this contest to take place today, our target speaker, and we point of order. Yes. said all the speakers should be out. I'm not out. Do I need to go out? Is anyone else? Okay. Okay. Please get If you don't hear the speech, you're in bad shape. <laughs> that's, that's my fault. I'm sorry. All the speakers will be escorted out after the hearing. 
they enjoyed it so much that they influenced the neighborhood boys to join in with them in my basement. So now I have a basement full of young boys building model cars. It grew so well. It, it took off uh, very fast because they enjoyed what they did. They enjoyed being with one another. They build, oh, good team building skills, good social skills. They had a place to belong. And they were just having fun. They were so good at building models that they won competitions within the state of Illinois. My job was to make sure that they represented the group well. <laughs> so they had to wear a shirt and tie at every competition. Okay. They didn't mind. They were having too much fun. They had to carry themselves in appropriate manner because they were representing the group. Later, it was so, such a success. Good things travel fast. We also moved the youth group to our local church. And there, too, we were having fun. There, I enjoyed being a den mother or the favorite aunt. Now, I'm preparing bigger meals bigger snacks on trips, uh, planning more and more, which I enjoy to do. Remember, I still remember those good days that I had when I was in a youth group. We went on certain trips, such as to the Beulah Field Museum. We also attended the Auto Museum. That was appropriate. If you're building model cars, you need to go to Volvo Auto Museum in Rockford. That's a must. <laughs> We also enjoyed other activities that were not surrounded around cars. We also influenced the children to learn how to go fish, to learn to fish. A lot of them did not know how to fish. So we taught them how to be fishermen. We took a, a weekend trip to Indiana to one of our, a close friend of the families had a large home in Indiana where they had a private, lake or pool, not necessarily a pool, but a private lake, because they have a lot of land. So they had a private lake where they had fish. There around the, fish, the fishing area, there were several boys, maybe 20, 20 boys around the lake early in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, fishing. How can you get teenagers 6 o'clock in the morning fishing? They were having fun. It was a beautiful sight to see, bonding with older brothers. Younger, younger boys without fathers, some with, with fathers that were not available to come on the trip, bonding, having fun. Those were priceless days. Also, we, we made sure that they had appropriate eating. They ate well. We made sure that we accommodated for their favorite foods, pizza, some like chicken, some like cheesy beans from an albino's restaurant on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> we accommodated all their desserts. We just wanted them to have a good time. We wanted to make sure they had a good time the way I had when I was in a youth group years ago. I was their favorite mom. So, I leave with you a couple of questions. From your past experiences, is there something in your life that you can reach back and you can give to someone else? Our past experiences are to prepare us for our purpose in life. I am so grateful of those uncles and aunts that I had in my local group. I want to ask you the question again, what motivates you? early Saturday morning. The true joy of giving is sharing. Thank you. Caroline uh, Finley, the joy of sharing. Well, at this time, we'll give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluation. We're going to ask that the sergeant at arms please escort the contestants out at this time, out of the room, and that the five minute time period begin from the time they are seated in the room. 
When that five minutes is over, please escort our contestants back into this room. We'll ask our timer. Additionally, he or she would set five minutes time on our timer while we give our contestants. In between that time, we're going to get the opportunity now to get to know our speaker a bit better. So we're going to ask Arlene Finley if she would come back to the lectern as we do a brief interview with her this week. guide them in 
them to the right path as effective uh, giving citizens. That is one of the most, I, I, can't, I can't say that enough because there's so many youth, they, all they need is for someone to listen to them. And it's amazing, being the den mother, they're all boys, it happens to be all boys. There, there are some girls that do attend, but when they do attend, they're helping me. And some of them want to know how to do model cars, uh, which is taking the box, taking the kid out of the box that's in a flat form, and <coughs> building the car, and making it in three-dimensional, detailing it, painting it, making it look as real as possible. These skills are looked upon as our as just plenty. But really, these are the blueprints of making our next architecture, uh, architects. Uh, anyone dealing with technical skills can learn how to take something from the abstract and make something out. It gives them skills how to discipline themselves, to sit, to sit still, to read a blueprint. They actually learn how to read a blueprint. So there's more going on than just sitting around, playing games, and talking with your friends and eating pizza. They're learning structure. They're learning that someone can, can listen to them and they can listen to someone else. And we now have young people that just come to, especially my husband because he's, he's, a, he's a fellow and they're learning things. It's, it's invaluable. It's invaluable. Look at this. While they have a whole plethora of information in this information age, they don't seem to know about what happened in the past. I was talking to a friend of mine whose daughter is 11, okay. and I told her that I remember when postage used to be three cents. <laughs> I remember if gasoline was a dollar, that was expensive. And she looked at me and she said, Were you a slave at <laughs> Thank you so much for being here.
being our target speaker today. I really enjoyed um, hearing your story of growing up with mentors and morphing into one yourself and becoming that favorite aunt. It was such a nice story. So what I'm going to do is give you a few things that I thought you did really well, and then I'm going to go over a couple of things that you might want to think about for next time, which were really hard to come up with, so um, hopefully it will help you in the end. First, I want to touch on your introduction. I liked the question, what motivates you on a Saturday morning? Well, like you said, today, Toastmasters motivates all of us, but it intrigued me. What is she going to say? What usually motivates her on a Saturday morning? What is she missing to be here with us today? So I really appreciated your introduction. I thought it was good how you shared the benefits as a child and as an adult um, within this process. So it really made us maybe think back to when we were children and how we would have gained and stuff out of this and think to, you know, what am I doing next Saturday? Maybe I should think about giving back a little bit and, and giving to someone else what we had as children. Um, I also liked a little bit of humor. You're not just one of the odds, you're the favorite odds. <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't too over the top or anything, but I liked how you threw that in there. I think you had a couple other spots like that too that I enjoyed. Um, I like the multiple examples of how you enjoyed this. It wasn't just, yeah, it's good, it's great. It was more around, you know, how you started with the cars in the basement, and then you moved it to the church, and now the kids are up at 6 a.m. fishing. You know, it was really showed us the progression of the work that you've been doing with this, so I really appreciated that. I loved your conclusion. You know, what does motivate us on a Saturday morning? And it really makes us think. So I like leaving us each thinking about what am I going to do to try to live up to our lean and try to, you know, make my life and somebody else's life better. So very good job on that. The couple things that I noticed that you might want to think about for next time, and like I said, there, there's just a couple of them and they were hard to think about, but one of them was your use of notes. <clears throat> I noticed that you relied on your notes quite a bit, um, and being in this contest, you don't, I don't know what speech number you're on, so maybe that's completely appropriate. Oh, <laughs> then it's completely appropriate. <laughs> into the adulthood, moving to the cars in the basement, and the church and try to use some different transitions. So that was all. Um, the last thing that I want to close up with um, was this group today, it's obvious what motivates us, is Toastmasters. But next Saturday, I bet more than one of us will think about you when we wake up on Saturday morning and wonder, I wonder what's motivating our lead today. <laughs> so thank you very much. was evaluation speech contestant number one, Margaret Winters. I'm going to allow for one minute of silence at this point while our judges mark the balance. I'm going to ask Mr. Tommy if you can signal when that one moment has elapsed. Second evaluation speech contestant. Contestant number two is Dave Roberson. Dave Roberson, contestant number two.
Hello, Toastmasters. Welcome to Cherish Guests. And specifically, <laughs> I am so happy that I did not take Ed's advice and leave the room before you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely did an exceptional job, and I want to share some things with you today. And your speech was about sharing and the joy of sharing. So I'm hopeful, hopeful that my evaluation will provide the same joy for you and me as you were able to do for the boys in those camps. Now, there's a few different ways that I could evaluate this. We could go intro, body conclusion. But for me, it's really important to talk about distinction. And the main distinction we have in Toastmasters is that competent communicator. So within it, you have to go through different competencies. Each speech adds on from the one before it. And I want to talk about the things that you did in relation to those. So we start off with self-expression through an icebreaker, right? You did a wonderful job with that in terms of sharing with us some things about yourself, you know, as a den mother, um, looking out for the guys, things like that. So that was really good. We actually got a chance to know you a little better through that. From there, you move on to purpose. So generally, you wanted to inform us of what, you know, different things you've been through in life, but also more specifically, sharing your story and then also motivating us to want to go and share as well in terms of having that joy of sharing. So definitely did a good job of conveying that. Uh, also, organization is really important in Toastmasters. That's another speech you get to. And with that, you started off telling us about your own personal story of how, you know, when you were growing up, you had people for you, and then from there, you moved on to talk about how you were able to actually share with the, the generations coming behind you. So the organization was great in that way because we could see that progression. So that was good. We we'll also talked about body gestures, and that's one of our favorites, right? So you did a great job with your hands. You, you kind of helped us to see where you were coming from at different points. And I'm super excited to see the next time you speak when you actually get from behind that lectern. And we can see the full you, so we can see you express if it's from your legs, I don't know what you got up your sleeve. You. <laughs> Any types of things that you can pull out to actually convey your point a little bit more, I think that would be great. Vocal variety is another piece that we talk about. And you did a good job of actually being very clear with your words. You projected, so I don't think there was anyone in the room that couldn't hear you. So you did a fantastic job with that. Another thing is visual aids. And with visual aids, you don't have to have a visual aid in every speech, but it could have been good, like with the model cards you talked about with the guys, maybe if you were able to pull one of those out and just kind of make, yeah, connect the dots with that. So it's good. But overall, I think you did a fantastic job. And you were very strong, like I said, as far as your clarity and expressing yourself and things like that. Just want to see you step from behind the lectern next time. Maybe use a little more gestures, but. I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time we speak. So thank you. Evaluation contestant number two, Dave Roberson. We will forget the fact that he got one in for messing up earlier. He thought he could have a speech contest. It was relegated to these two. Very good. We're now ready for contestant number three, Michael Gugis. Michael Gugis, evaluation speech contestant number three.
fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and especially you, Arlene. I applaud you for your courage. This is not an easy thing to do, to stand in front of an entire room of strangers and give a speech. So I think you should be applauded for taking a step outside of your comfort zone. I think you have an excellent speaking voice, could be heard, you spoke with confidence, and it was a wonderful, very inspirational subject. Are you? You spoke with pride and passion. There are a few suggestions, though, that I have for you so that you can be taken to the next level. Now, like you, I used to start off with a single sheet of paper I'd lay, except I didn't have a lectern to lay it on. So paper would be rattling, and I don't know how you kept track of what, where, you, where you were in it. That was a huge problem for, for me. And I think that when you're speaking about things that you experience, speaking from the heart, then it becomes a conversation that you're having with family members and friends. And we're your friends. So I think that you can do without the notes. I know it can be tough. And also, let go. <laughs> There were times that you'd hold on and give us half gestures. See if you can get a copy of the video tape of that. That can help you. Play it fast forward, and you'll notice anything repetitive that you're doing, such as glancing at your notes. <laughs> that is self-correcting. It's almost like counting ahs and ums that will help you dramatically improve. And once you have that confidence to speak, now the first time it'll be a little uncomfortable speaking without notes, but believe me, it works. Then you can start moving around. And this room has an odd shape. You're holding eye contact for a single thought, using the entire room. Some speakers have a tendency to, when all they need to do is simply turn their head slowly. But I think you have the tools. And I think you have the potential to be like George and Wheezy, moving on up. <laughs> and I expect to see you in a competition soon. Mr. Toastman. Evaluation contestant number four, Anisha Hubbard. Anisha Hubbard. Speech Thank you for sharing so much 
to join with us to make it a happy Saturday. Arlene, you really inspired us to consider what our passion is, what gets us excited, especially on a Saturday morning. I commend you for coming in and imparting us with that joy, that peace of joy, uh, this day. The purpose of your speech was to share with us what inspired you to start giving back. And you started off by setting the stage, telling us about how you enjoyed going to your church and really working. But what really helped to set the stage is that you shared your past experiences and your present reflections, and you tied those two together. You did that very well. And in doing that, you helped us understand your why, why this was your passion. The connections that you made really helped us as an audience to have empathy. And I think once you do that, make that type of connection with your audience, you, got, you, you get our attention, and then we're hooked, and we want to hear more of what you say. And in addition to that, what it does is it helps us to start thinking about our own personal experiences. So you really did open the door for us to think about what's our joy? How is it that we share? I love the fact that you brought in the story of your husband and your son. Now, the way you introduced them was quite intriguing because I felt that your speech had reached its climax, and then I asked myself, okay, where is this story going? Because now you started talking about cars, but a minute ago you were talking about sharing and, and mentoring. And once you made that connection, and you showed the value and the joy that came from the fact that, in addition to their love of cars, you had you know, learning how to fish, you had the bonding that took place with the male side, so that they could get that experience, and then you talked about the healthy habits. That really helped to, uh, to draw us in even. I felt that your strengths, Arlene, were the fact that, one, you did not refer to your notes very often. It was clear that you had your notes, you came up here, and you heard some of the few times that you made such great eye contact with the audience, it was as if you didn't have any notes up here with you. And you also had the audience participating with you in your speech. And we were participating with our laughter. Uh, sometimes it was with the eyes as we listened to your story. And then you also have the mm-hmm when you mentioned the pizza place that I had never heard of, but apparently lots of people have heard of it <laughs> <laughs> on the south side. Uh, your speech also had very sound structure. I mean, you had a very clear beginning, a middle, and an end. So you obviously prepared a well-crafted story. I would have loved to see you speak from the heart so much more because your speech was about the joy of sharing and your passion. I mean, I have an acronym for passion that I want to share with you. And I think this acronym would help uh, the next time that you're sharing this story with someone else. Passion is when we pull all that satisfies our soul <coughs> to ignite others. And we do that now. That's what passion stands for. You're pulling all of that from inside you that satisfies your soul. And you're igniting everybody in this room. <coughs> so I feel that in your story, there could have been a lot more passion, you know, more smiles. It more heartfelt, and then you would have it would have exuded from not only what you were saying, but from your body and everything else. But overall, I thank you so much for sharing your story. It was an excellent speech, well practiced story, and I wish you well the next time as you continue to impart joy uh, with others. Thank you. One moment before I get just again to mark the belt. Our timer will indicate when that time has elapsed. Contestant number five, Sabrina Coleman Easter. Sabrina Coleman Easter, speech evaluation contestant 
number five. Speech evaluation contestant number six, Renita Dixon. 
Anita Dixon, speech evaluation contestant number six. contest is our last contestant, contestant number seven, Ron Lorsch. Ron Lorsch, contestant number seven. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, honored guests, and somewhere out there are the families. 
That was a wonderful speech. You used your youth to an adult. You used a great theme. You brought the audience in. I was a child, and I did this. And now it's come all the way back to you. And I'm an adult, and I'm giving back. That was great. You used emotion. Sometimes when you use emotion, you break down. But you did not. You carried it through expertly. You had a good, loud voice, not as loud as mine, but you had a good, loud voice and everybody could hear you. You used giving back, which was another very emotional part of your speech. You used humor, something about 6 a.m. in the morning, I think we're here early enough today, and everybody laughed. That was fantastic. What could you have done to improve your speech? Well, for one, you were behind the lectern all the time, which I'm sure you're aware of. What you can do is come out here and talk to us. Because you know what? You're telling a speech about your youth and about yourself. If you forget one part, or a whole part, who knows? Nobody knows except you. Then what you can do is come back here. And I guarantee you, most of the people out here will not know you even glanced at your notes, glanced at your bullet points. And you can keep doing that, and nobody except maybe one or two people will realize it. I was waiting for a prop. A fish would have been a little difficult. <laughs> but a model car you could have brought and displayed to us. The fish you could have used a gesture for it, like that, and that would have got some more of our interest. What else could you have done? You could have varied your pace a little bit. It was the same pace. You have a wonderful smile, and you work the room. You used eye contact. You need a little bit of vocal variety. Now, as an adult, I'm giving back. Could have done more of that. But the best advice I have for you is to keep speaking. Mr. Toastmaster. That was contestant number seven, Ron Lowe. We'll allow one minute for our judges to make their final calculations of the interview. One more side. Our judges should now be making their final calculations and they will allow our chief judge and ballot counters to collect those. So could you make your final indications on the ballot and pass those to the ballot counters? We'll collect those at this time.
Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. All right. Thank you very much. and ballot counters go out and make their tabulations. We're going to ask our contestants for just a moment of thing to return. I'll call you up briefly and we want to get to know you just a bit. We have some time constraints, but we're going to allow you just a bit of time to tell us something about yourselves. Contestant number one, Margaret Winters. <laughs> Margaret, tell us what club you're a member of and how long you've been And we'd like to ask you, what do you like most about it? Is this your first time in the speech evaluation contest? Yes. And what did you like most about it? Nothing. <laughs> 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 I'll be home with a better answer. <laughs> I like listening to the speeches because you get to hear people that aren't in your own club and get to see different styles and things like that. And Margaret told me that she liked my tie. She gets five points. Just for <laughs> 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 Oh, let's give her a round of applause.
archives of reading Coleman East to. Tickets for the conference. It's very painless. 
But you can also do this a la carte. You don't have to sign up for everything like I did. Uh, you know, I, want, I want all the fun. But if you just want to go for the contest or to hear the keynote speak, you know, there are different options that you can take. But I encourage, I encourage you to go for the whole conference. It's just one day, but it's going to be jam-packed. It's going to be a lot of fun. announcements being had or we're going to we're going to take a 10 minute break at this time let's break and uh, mr chandra will you indicate when 10 minutes has elapsed we'll yes. take 10 minutes allow you to get the refreshments and to talk to the monsters 10 minutes thank you